Fire is an essential item that you need to survive. While there is a plethora of different ways out there to start a fire, I'm gonna be going over the six ways I've personally found work fairly easy for most people. Now, I do wanna point out before we jump into these items, it's always important to have a good fundamental understanding of how to start a fire without any of these aids, but these aids make it a lot easier and that's why I'm sharing them with you here today. The first item that we have here is going to be toilet paper and dryer lint. So these toilet paper rolls with some dryer lint shoved in them work really well. You gotta make sure that you don't pack these tight. It needs to be loose in here for the fire to burn through because this dryer lint will light on fire really easy. Whether you're using matches, you're using a lighter, um, even if you're striking it with uh, flint and steel to get sparks, it's gonna work really well on these. Catch that lint on, that lint will then catch the cardboard on fire and give you a start of a slow burn to start with. So those are going to be the first option we have here that I want to point out to you and it's using an item pretty much everybody has in their home. The next thing we have here is going to be cotton balls or cotton rounds and Vaseline. So this right here is something you can pick up at almost any drugstore, grocery store for probably 99 cents or so for this size container. I believe that's what I paid. And then you can pick up a giant thing of cotton balls or cotton rounds, which is what I prefer for a couple bucks and that's gonna give you an ability to start dozens, if not even hundreds of fires, depending on how generous you are with this Vaseline. So this stuff is very flammable and it will burn for a while too. So you just take your cotton round, you rub it in here, you put it down under your kindling in your fire, you light the cotton round. This is gonna burn for, my experience, usually about one to two minutes and get that flame going really good to catch your kindling on fire. It's a lot easier than trying to light it with a match or trying to do anything else where you're trying to light tender directly. So that's the second option we have here. The third one, and this is actually one that I, I feel on works very, very well, is going to be a cupcake liner, a paper one to clarify. Fill it with some sawdust and then put wax over the top. You can also do these with egg cartons as well and sawdust, or I've heard of people using shredded paper, but I think the sawdust just burns better. So you take these guys, and this is again, my personal experience is flip them upside down when you're ready to start your fire, light it. These will burn for several minutes. They put off a good size flame. Even if you're working with some pretty wet kindling, I feel you'd be able to get it dried out enough with one of these as your fire starter to get it lit. So that's that option here. The next thing we have is gonna be duct tape. Duct tape is surprisingly flammable. So with your duct tape, you can just wrap this around any form of twigs or smaller kindling you have, light the duct tape on fire. It's actually going to burn for a relatively long amount of time. It'll burn hot and catch that surrounding, uh, surrounding pieces on fire. So duct tape is a good option there. And then, Another option to look into would be hand sanitizer. So ever since the virus that happened a couple years ago that we all, I'm sure, know about, this stuff's been everywhere. It's gone to a point where you couldn't find it to where places literally cannot give containers away for free if they try. So this is really easy to get your hands on. Pretty much any place you have out there will have them. So picking up these containers, and carrying them with you. They're a great fire starter. This will catch on fire very easily. Burns hot easily enough to catch other stuff on fire, help you get that fire built up. Now, hand sanitizer, keep in mind there are alcohol-free variants, are variants that do not have as much alcohol content in them. Make sure you're getting the high content for alcohol with your hand sanitizers if you're gonna use it for this purpose. And the last item that works as a fire starter, and this one has a pretty obvious one, but I do want to add it on here, is commercial fire starters like these right here. So these are traditionally what most people probably think of when you're thinking of a fire starter. And those are sold at a lot of camping stores, outdoor stores, a lot of hardware stores will sell these as well. Sometimes more in the fall and spring, you'll even see them at you know some local grocery stores or gas stations. But with the fact that they're a fire starter, pre-made, they're very easy to use. You can split them up into smaller pieces than that, but they are a little bit pricier than any of these other options on here since they do have that dedicated purpose. I don't have an example of the fire starters with a striker on them, 
but you can get smaller ones that are more designed for camping or backpacking that actually have almost a match head on the end of it and they're typically about the size of a pencil eraser one of those you know square ones that you would have in schools and they have a striker head on the end of it you light them and it'll light the whole thing on fire so those are probably the coolest ones out there I'd recommend getting if you want something to carry with you. I just don't happen to have any convenient to grab and show you guys today. But that commercial fire starter is what's going to be rounding off our list just because they're easy, they're out there and convenient to have. And if you don't want to make any of these other options or you don't happen to have any of these others that you want to set aside, you just want something to leave it and forget it, those commercial fire starters work great for that. Now, I do want to point out as well, with any fire starter, you have to have a way to ignite it. So... The big thing with the fire starter is it's giving you that advantage of it's a highly combustible item so you don't have to worry about lighting it as much versus trying to light some sort of kindling or tender that you got out and found in the woods, for example. So in combination with one of these, you do want to carry a lighter or some waterproof matches. Waterproof matches are fairly cheap to get. I would not recommend leaving these just in these original box alone though if you're in somewhere with a lot of humidity or you're storing them in a vehicle or backpack i would put these in a little ziploc baggie and keep them there you also can get bic lighters i don't happen to have an example of a bic lighter in front of me but i'm sure most of you know what those are zippos work well you do have to keep them filled with fluid though so keep that in mind but the zippos work well and then even like these longer grill lighters you can get these relatively cheap just pick a couple packs up you know even just once a year and they'll last for quite a while you have them on hand when you need them and they'll work well with these fire starters to get your fire up and roaring now there's other methods out there that you guys personally have been using or that you found worked really well i didn't touch on this list here today drop them down in the comments below let's hear what you guys are using to start your fires out there thanks for tuning in today stay safe and stay prepared